This is a quick video on section 2.5 and 10.1 related to composition of functions. Okay, Composition of functions only in the context of composition of functions. We're not going to talk for the, in this video about inverse functions. We'll talk about inverse functions in another video. Okay. So the idea of composition of functions, uh, the implications here is that you need to have at least uh, two functions must be given to you. At least two functions are given. So for example, we could have um, the function f of x could be 3x minus 1. And the function g of x, another function, could be 1 minus x squared. Okay, a typical question here is um, typical functions function questions related to these two given functions are for example can you find the function evaluated at 0 can you find the function g evaluated at 1 you can deal with these functions separately right by just plugging in 0 0 is the input to the function f of x that's what this means so we mean the function at x is equal to 0. What does this, this function notation imply? The function evaluated at 0 is 3 times 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. And g of 1 means the function g at x is equal to 1, which means wherever you see a 1 in the g equation, you need an x in the g equation, you need to put a 1. So this would be 1 minus 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, so you get 0. So this is an example of uh, two functions that are given, and you can evaluate, evaluate the functions separately. Okay, let's look at our first composition of functions. Okay, the notation is a little bit different. There are two possible compositions that can happen here. You can have the function f of x, and for the x, you can use g of x as the input. Okay? Or we can have another composition of functions. We can have g, and we can have f of x as the input. g of x, in the first case, is the input to the function f, and in the second case, the function f of x is the input to the function g. Okay. Let's look at a couple examples here in the context of the functions that we have given here. Okay. So let me ask you the following question. We know the function evaluated at 0 is 0. Okay. So here was the input to the function f, and here is the output of the function f. 0 is the output of the function and the input is 0. Okay. When I write g of f of 0, what do I mean by that? I mean that I want to take the function evaluated at 0, that would be step 1, and then your first step is to find the function evaluated at 0, and then your second step is to do the function g evaluated at f of 0. So the first step would be to compute the function evaluated at 0, um, sorry, which we have done and shown that above to be negative 1. Okay, The function evaluated at 0 is negative 1, so instead of the function evaluated at 0, I can say I've answered that, and the answer is negative 1. So now I need to do the second step. The second step says that I need to find the function g at an input of negative 1. g of negative 1 is 1 minus negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is... <coughs> 1, so you'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this two-step process, the part that's in the black font here, f of 0, 
in the purple font, sorry, f of 0, you find that to be negative 1. Then you take the negative 1 and plug that into the function um, g. That two-step process is the composition of functions. So we can conclude from these steps that the function f, sorry, that we can conclude that the function g evaluated at f of 0, we can conclude that the answer there is 0. Okay, let's try this similar problem, but let's try it in another order. Okay, what if I ask you to do the function f evaluated at g of 1? Okay, this is a two step process. First, you will compute the function g of 1, and then you will evaluate the function f evaluated at the output of g of 1. So as a two-step process, we will compute g of 1. g of 1, we decided um, uh, earlier, was 0. So g of 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Now I need to go to the second step of my two-step process. Okay. This will be the function evaluated at 0 which means that my function f was 3x minus 1. So I'll do 3 times 0 minus 1 with an answer of negative 1. So there's a two-step process. You take 0 is the output of g of 1. And then the output of 0 becomes the input to the function f. Okay. So we would conclude that f of g of 1 is equal to negative 1. Okay. So that's how the formulas work for composition of functions. Okay. Let's do one more example to kind of put this all together. Okay. Uh, again, let's say that our function f of x is x squared and the function g of x is um, 2x plus 5. Okay. Let's ask for two problems. Let's find f of g of 2, okay. which splits into two steps. First, you need to find g of 2 and you'll get a number. The second step would be to then to take f evaluated at that number. Okay, so let's split this into two steps. Find g of 2. g of 2 is 2 times 2 plus 5, which is 9. So 9 is our number. Now I need to find the function evaluated at 9. The function evaluated at 9 is 9 squared, which is 81. So these two steps together would lead to our conclusion that f of g of 2, this is pronounced f of g of 2, is equal to 81. Okay. Uh, similar to this, but a little bit different, I could ask for g of f of x g of f of x splits into two steps. I first need to find f of x. Okay, I will find this. And then two, I need to find g of whatever I got from right here. So f of x is simply x squared. So the x squared goes into the function g as an input so g of x squared is 2 times x squared plus 5, which is another way of saying 2x squared plus 5. So that 2x squared plus 5 is a new function that we would call the composition. This 2x squared plus 5 is what we call the composition of the, f of the function f of the function g with the function f, composition of g with f. 
Okay, these problems uh, can be um, uh, not quite as um, formulaic. They may not, for example, in problems give you the formula. So here we've been given formulas. It's possible that maybe they would give you some other information. So let's look at a problem here. Another type of problem. They would, uh, let me see. Okay, here is a typical problem. Notice that what you're given, okay, you're given information about f of x and you're given information about g of x, but you're not given their formulas, you're given their, given their graphs, okay? The question is, could we answer composition of functions information? So for example, question number A would be f of g of negative 1. Okay. Now remember, this is a two-step process. You need to first find g of negative 1, find that as a number. Once you find that number, you need to put that number into the function f and get your final answer right here. Okay, so let's first find g of negative 1. So I need to look at the function g, the graph of it. Um, here is x is equal to negative 1. g of negative 1 is the y value, the output of the function g when an input of negative 1 is given. So g of negative 1, according to this graph, is negative 1. Now I need to find the function evaluated at negative 1. So now my input for step 2, the input is negative 1 in the f graph. So now I need to switch my perspective from the function g and I now need to start looking at the f function. So I need to look at the function f evaluated at negative 1. Again, x equals negative 1 is here and then I need to read the graph up to the y-axis along the function here so when x is negative 1 we have looks like we have a y value of 2 so f of negative 1 is 2 and then we can conclude that our answer f of g of negative 1 is 2 okay. so not always will you be given a function uh, f of x as a formula, sometimes you will be given um, an answer as um, a, a functions as a graph. Okay, so that's an intro to um, composition of functions. Uh, you don't always um, uh, well, I don't know what I was going to say, sorry about that. Uh, let me, so let's see through here if there's another problem we could compute. Let's do one more example here um, that it's possible that you may have to do more than a composition of two functions. So for example here. Here we have to do f composing it with m composing it with g of x. So this is a three-step process. First Okay, um, you have to find g of x. Okay, that's the first step. Two, you would need to find m of g of x. Okay, and then you would get <clears throat> uh, so we would get a number here. It's not really a number, but it would be some placeholder uh, function. And then I'll get a star, another thing. And then the third step would be to find f of star. Okay. And this would be your final answer. Okay, so let's see if we can compute this problem. G of x is 9x minus 2, so we know that. Okay, so let's move on to step two now. We know we now need to find m of hashtag. Hashtag was 9x minus 2, so I need to find m of 9x minus 2, which means I need to look at the m equation, which is 4x, and then I need to put at 
x is equal to 9x minus 2. So wherever you see the x, you're supposed to put 9x minus 2. So you get 4 times 9x minus 2, 36x minus 8. So 36x minus 8 is the star. Okay, And then as a final step here, the third step would be to find the function f evaluated at star, which means that I need to put 36x minus 8. And what does that mean? It means I need to take the function f, which is 3x squared, and instead of using x, I need to use 36x minus 8. So that would be 3 times 36x minus 8. Square it. Okay. And that would be a good answer. So, for example, if I asked you to find f of m of g of 1, okay, you would first find g of 1. g of 1 is 9 minus 2, which is 7. Second step, okay, you would get a number. I need to find m of that number m of that number is um, 4 times 7, which is 28. That is our number star. And then final step 3, I need to find f of star. And my function f is 3x squared. And so wherever I see star, I'm supposed to put in 28. Okay. 28 squared, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but you will get some final answer. 3 times 28 squared. Okay, So that would be a good start to composition of functions as a first video. We'll do more examples in the practice problems and more examples in class.